Okay. Our next speaker, he comes to you locally from the Netherlands. Saul is going to be talking to us about going mobile with React and native WebRTC. Saul. Hey, thanks, Alex. Sure. Uh, so thanks everyone for making it after lunch. Uh, let's talk mobile. Uh, first, some little introductions. I'm hoping. Hello. I think you think you might have hit the the mute switch by accident on top. The switch right here. Good. Oh. Yeah. Working now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, as I was saying, let's let's talk mobile um, as a dessert. I come from uh, eight by eight an enterprise cloud communications company. And uh, I'm part of the Jitsi team that just moved from Atlassian to 8x8, and this is going to become somewhat relevant throughout the presentation. That's why we're here. Uh, so in sub, those who don't know what Jitsi is or what it does, that means everybody knows it. All right. Me? You? I'm going to run really quickly uh, through this, and we're going to focus just on some of these items. Uh, it's a set of open source projects. Uh, we have pretty much a full stack to allow you to deploy video conferencing infrastructure, which is WebRTC compatible. Uh, we've got APIs and mobile SDKs so that you can do this without needing to worry about all the details. Uh, and we're also a community of uh, enthusiasts and people who are actually paid to work on this. Uh, it's all open source and all of it that you're going to see today. This is pretty much how it looks like, especially when you're a lone developer and you use the Big Bug Bunny as your video feed to test yeah, some participants. Uh, probably know. This is how our mobile app looks like. And today we're going to focus on how this mobile app is built and what you can leverage from it and how we already did it uh, not once but twice in our sort of endeavors here. Uh, it is packed with features. Today, I'm just going to mention uh, how you can embed the SDKs, but know that pretty much uh, all the features you expect from a mature video conferencing solution are there, and everything is like Lego blocks. You just need to deploy different components to gain different features, like PSTN calling, recording, transcriptions. We got it. So um, going mobile. It just started as a an application on the web and then at some point of course you want to go mobile because that's where things are happening these days right uh, and how do we do it so we looked at what we had uh, at our architecture and at a very very high level it's got these little blocks so at the bottom of it we have you know WebRTC itself uh, we use a strobe JS because our signaling is XMPP based but that's just an implementation detail let's say and other libraries. On top of this, we build this, we call it low level, but depends on how you look at it, it might be considered high level. LibGitsyMeet is a library that abstracts all the signaling, uh, stream handling, and everything, um, so that you can build a GUI on top, providing the Jitsi experience. And then we have JitsiMeet, which is the UI, or that website you saw with the big back bunny right there. So how does this roughly translate to like lines of code and stuff? So Jitsi Meet is around 40,000 lines of code, and Lib Jitsi Meet is around 30,000 lines of code. So when we decided, hey, uh, we want to go mobile, how do we approach this? Well, the typical way to do this is to experiment or to start with full native. So you write your uh, iOS application in Swift or Objective-C, and your Android in Java or Kotlin. So we did some experiments. And with around 20,000 lines of code, we got like, you know, 10% of the features. So we knew that that was not an avenue we wanted to pursue because the effort required to achieve feature parity and then having to maintain it across all these platforms, it was just not a good way forward for us. Everything I'm saying here is what worked for us. It may not work for you. It may. Uh, so who knows? Then... Um, what we were wondering is, is there a way for us to leverage those 30,000 or so lines of code in libgitsimit, so the library that takes all the signaling, stream handling, and all that stuff so that we can share it 
between the web application and the mobile application and this way we don't need to like do it all over again um, at the same time one of the goals we we're working towards was to getting rid of lots of uh, jquery baggage and moving on to a more modern web architecture using react and suddenly uh, facebook released react native react native which bridged the gap between you know react and mobile so it looked like a promising avenue uh, how many are familiar with react native here how many are working with it all right just a few so i'm hoping i can show you something useful today so what is react native and why is it interesting so it is not a web view uh, many people think is somehow that way because there is some JavaScript involved. So it's just a JavaScript API that allows you to create an actual honest to God native application. So no problems in the performance, no problems in the performance when it comes to running on a web view and no sort of drawbacks from using a web view because the experience is different. If you guys have worked with Cordova and the like, you probably know that you have to employ all sorts of tricks uh, to make sure it feels native. So this is native. Uh, it's a thriving ecosystem, so all the hipsters are behind it, uh, which means lots of packages every day, um, lots of good stuff has come out of it, and of course it gets deployed in important you know, projects, Facebook projects, uh, Instagram, all sorts of, uh, you know, let's say relevant applications, so it's, um, is out there and people are using it. And if we squint, it's just React and JavaScript. So from afar, it looks like very similar to what we're doing on the web, mm -hmm. but somehow it works in mobile. So it, it looked like a great fit. Now, how does this work in practice? Like it sounds good, but how is this working all the pieces together? So it, if we look at the architecture, it's actually reasonably easy to comprehend. So React Native um, includes this thing called the bridge. And what the bridge does is it gives you an asynchronous interface uh, from the JavaScript world to native and from native to the JavaScript world. So when we call a function in JavaScript, everything is asynchronous and that function will end up translating into a call on native. And when we want to communicate with JavaScript, we will asynchronously emit an event uh, or call a function from the native side to JavaScript. What we use JavaScript for is to, for example, create layout. So we say, I want a view. And then this bridge will end up programmatically creating either a UI view on iOS or a view on Android. Now, <clears throat> what this looks like in practice is that here we have a capture of Xcode. Uh, it may be a little bit hard to see the contrast, uh, with all these lines, this is the UI Explorer. So all the items you see there in the column on the left are the nested views. So this layout that we did in JavaScript suddenly gets translated into native views. So this is like you did it in Xcode altogether. Uh, and that's why you get like the benefits of the dynamic nature of this JavaScript side that you have but then you get the performance of native views because they are native views. Now we said we want to go mobile, um, and of course, if, if we're talking about real-time communications, we need some WebRTC in the mix, right? Uh, as our media engine. So what's the what's the situation? How does it look like today? So the core project is called an unimaginatively React Native WebRTC. And it exposes the WebRTC APIs, same as they are in the browser for the most part, uh, for use within React Native. Uh, it's pretty battle tested, so we have been using it for years now, uh, and we know of many others that are using it. And it's reasonably up to date. So right now we are on M7, uh, M69, and we track upstream uh, close so that whenever WebRTC has some new features to offer, uh, we can leverage them on React Native. For example, one of the latest ones to, to make it was um, WebRTC launched the Metal-based renderer so that you could have your video views rendered with the Metal framework, which is more performant and less intensive on the hardware. 
And uh, because we updated to 69, we had the ability to use them. So we updated the plugin so that uh, you can use them too. Now, <clears throat> all the React Native glitter is unfortunately not gold. It has, there's a number of things that one needs to know before getting in. So first is you will need to write some native code. So all these things where, oh yeah, your web developers can also do mobile. It's only partially true. You will eventually need to write some native code to, to talk to some system APIs, and I'm going to mention some of them right now. For example, audio routing, uh, which is critical for a mobile application that has anything to do with real-time communications. Uh, where is your audio going to go? For example, on a video call, the expectation is usually that the audio comes out of the speaker. But on an audio call, is the, the expectation is that it comes out of the earpiece. Uh, you also probably want to switch on the fly if a Bluetooth device was connected. All of this is not there. It's not done automatically. So you need to at least talk to some APIs to get a list of devices or show you a view that has uh, the ability to select the device. And all of this is very platform dependent and both of the platforms need a little bit of massaging so that things work smoothly between them. Same goes for a call kit or connection service. Uh, for those who may not know the name, on iOS and on Android, <coughs> sorry, there is this way to integrate with the system dialer so that your calls look like native calls. Uh, on iOS, this is called Cockit, and on Android, which is a bit lesser known, it's called Connection Service. So, of course, you want to integrate with both so that your calls show up in the recents list uh, so that one call does, doesn't get interrupted by a PSTN coming call, or at least you get the choice of, do I want to reject the incoming call, or will it take over my call? All of these things, both of them uh, take care of this, and you need to do something about this. Uh, luckily, there is a, a, a nice plugin called React Native called Keep, which implements um, a common API above both, but it's something that needs to be integrated. Then there is an interesting thing about codecs. So, for instance, most of the phones have hardware accelerated H.264, and some Android devices have hardware accelerated VP8. And some chipsets are blacklisted, so sometimes you get issues like, oh, my uh, phone gets hot when I have video calls. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Uh, <laughs> we're using VP8 and the CPU is burning like hell on your iPhone because of course it doesn't do uh, VP8 in hardware. Uh, what can you do? <laughs> Wait. Then timers. Um, there's this interesting thing where uh, JavaScript timers don't run when your app is in the background. And then you realize, oh, but all my pings, I go to hell. Uh, so you need to replace them with native timers that can run on the native side and do stuff. There's a plugin that can be used, and React Native has grown the ability to, to do background timers on iOS, at least so it will not be needed for long. But it's something to keep in mind, because otherwise, even if your application is running in the background, JavaScript timers are not. They just, it's like they're not there. And then you're like, why is my heartbeat not heart beating? Like, why is everything broken? Well, that's why. And then there are lots of cross-platform shenanigans. Like in Open, in, in Android's OpenGL, you only have like three layers where you can draw. So if you want to do like um, one video above another video, you need to watch out a little bit. Uh, iOS doesn't have this picture-in-picture -picture nice thing that Android has, and you probably want it for your application. So what do we do about it? There's a number of things uh, that you need to consider when you're, when you're doing your application. Now, the same way I say that not all the glitter is gold, unfortunate, uh, fortunately, we do have uh, a new community where most of these things have been fixed, let's say. Uh, it's the React Native WebRTC community. It's the first time I mention it in, in any of my talks because we did the work in the backgrounds, and now we band it together with other project authors and bundle them in this GitHub organization. We have a discourse group as well, and React Native WebRTC is there, CallKeep is there, uh, InCall Manager, which is a plugin to deal with some of the device shenanigans, is also there. So we're trying to make this like the go-to place for React Native related plugins uh, when it comes to WebRTC. But they can do you one better. I can give you the Jitsi Meet SDK 
where we solved all the problems, so you don't have to. So back to how uh, our mobile app looks like, pretty much like this. Um, but what is really inside? So everything you see there is this thing, this Jitsi Meet view, which is actually a React view under the hood that does all the drawing. So this API is really high level. We give you everything you see on the screen. You don't have to do the UI. You can customize it a bit, but you don't have to do the UI. You don't have to do device management. You don't have to do call kit. You don't have to do none of that. All of it is taken care of. It is available for Android and iOS. Um, it's easy to integrate into existing native applications. This is where, where we sort of optimized it. We had it integrated in uh, at license and stride. Rest in peace. Now, in 8x8's virtual office, uh, I know Riot IM has integrated it as well. And uh, there's this uh, nice application where you can call Santa with you know, on Christmas time and stuff, and they use Jitsi for it. And they use the SDK as well. Um, all of it that I told you is taken care of in this app, and we just released a new version of the API. Uh, as I said, the Jitsi team was previously at Atlassian. Now we are at 8x8. So what does this give us? This gives us the wisdom of hindsight. So we've done this integration of the meetings experience in Jitsi Meet in two applications, Stride and Virtual Office. And we have learned in this process. And we refined the API so that it looks a little bit better. Here is a little glimpse of, of how it looks like. This is what you would do in your view controller in iOS. Uh, you would create this Jitsi Meet Conference Options object, uh, which is built with this entity, and you can set some stuff, which is should be reasonably obvious when you look at it. So you say, what room do I want to join? Well, test one, two, three. Do you want your audio to be muted from the start? No. Mm -hmm. Do you want a video muted to be muted from the start? Yes. And then you say join, and you're good. And then you see the meeting uh, UI with you are muted and everything. You have joined this conference. And when you click hang up, you will get this delegate method or this event call, which tells you, hey, the conference terminated. So you may want to go back to whatever your application was doing earlier. Uh, we also have some extra events when you join. Now, usually things are more complex on Android, uh, but not this time. So this time, we managed <coughs> to actually make it easier. Uh, so you are in your whatever activity or whatever part of your application, you have a button to launch a meeting. And we have these, uh, you build the options pretty much like before. You select what room you want to join. Do you want to be audio muted? Do you want to be video muted? We build these options and we say launch. And it will join the meeting with those options. And once the meeting is over, it will dismiss itself. And you're back to whatever it is that you were doing before. Now, of course, everything is easier said than done. Uh, but in order to help people get on board with this, uh, we recently uh, published a few SDK examples. In this uh, repository, you can find a few examples, one written in Java for Android, one written in Swift for iOS, and another one also for iOS written in Objective-C. And it's just an example of the most basic integration. So a button, a text field where you can write what room do you want to join. And then when you click Join, the Jitsi Meet SDK is used to join that room. So this is an example of how you would embed it into your application. Uh, I started by saying that what we wanted to do was reuse this code that we already had written in the form of Live Jitsi Meet and the Jitsi Meet UI itself. So let's see how well we did. Of course, guesstimation, but hey. So Live Jitsi Meet, we use it all of it. It's Pretty much 100% code share, except in you know the branching in is this Chrome, is this Firefox, is this React Native. But the core logic of a string management, XMPP signaling, all the events telling you what's going on, all of it is leveraged in the mobile application as well. And in the Jitsi Meet UI, we think it's around 85% code share. And this is because the beauty of React Native is that it's just a different way to declaratively describe your UI. But the rest of the, the bulk of your application, all the business logic, is still written as your middlewares and your controllers and all of those things. Um, a very simplistic example is 
um, what you see here and you can see there is the toolbox component. Uh, so when you look at our code, you will see that there's a toolbox and it just has two slightly different ways of displaying itself. One is used on mobile and the other one is used on the web, but it's the same exact component. And this is how we ar arrived at these 85 or so uh, code we use thanks to how this ecosystem bonds itself together. And now, let me tell you, for example, how these this can be applied in, in, an, in an enterprise um, style ecosystem. So 8x8 has this application called Virtual Office. It's for enterprise uh, communications. Some of you may know about it. It sort of looks this way, you know. Um, you're in a way that the, the flow is very similar to what you see in other messaging applications. So the ability to send messages to each other, to call each other, for which uh, Virtual Office already had a SIP stack and the whole audio shebang to go with in order to make audio calls. Now, when we joined 8x8, we were brought in to take <coughs> meetings to the next level, which is what we hope we're doing. And that button there at the bottom that does meetings, it switches to the meetings experience. And what we did was take Jitsi Meet, the Jitsi Meet SDK, which gives you the entire UI uh, so you don't need to do it and we just put it in there. So the native application all it has to do is decide what meeting you need to join um, And you know you want to integrate with your calendar and so the recent ones and whatnot But the part that actually deals with having the meeting is already done. So it doesn't need to be uh, fabricated from scratch for example to give you an idea we pretty much finished joining 8x8 uh, late November and we are going to release this for general availability soon um, all across the, the company our customers and this is not only mobile but also desktop and whatnot <coughs> so we could only do this because we have this SDK that does all the experience so we have uh, there doesn't need to be any re-engineering of everything and doing it twice one for Android one for iOS we have a single SDK that works for both plus our iframe API on the web, which allowed us to sort of embed meetings into an existing product. So sort of to wrap it up, um, would I recommend React Native as uh, your sort of tool chain of choice for your next WebRTC related project that needs to go mobile? Absolutely, yes. Uh, I think it's ready. Uh, it has proven itself. We are not afraid of shipping it uh, to paying customers, we have been doing it for quite a while. And if your product has this need for doing meetings, uh, I really encourage you to take a look at the Jitsi Meet SDK, fully open source, uh, Apache 2 licensed, is not tied to us in any way. So you can deploy your own infrastructure, join your meetings in your own infrastructure, but you can also join meetings on our own infrastructure, which we provide for free at Meet Jitsi. Um, and uh, this way you will not reinvent the wheel and maybe you find uh, a few bucks that you can report to us and we can uh, make it better together. That's all I got, guys. Do we have any questions for Saul? <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't. Do you have any questions for Saul? Thank you, thank you. Anyone? Let me know by raising your hand. See how this works? So now React Native side, uh, how does it take care of the version and change in iOS and Android and all compatibility issues? So that's one area that we've seen. We develop an app and then after the new iOS version comes, Something else. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that is a good question. If if you develop with React Native, you do need to follow the development reasonably closely. So it is a core part of, uh, in the end, it will become the centerpiece of your application. And uh, they have been doing a better job in the last few releases, but they, I think around almost 20 releases ago, so around the days of 0 0.40, 
uh, we have been using it since a lot earlier, by the way. So we have seen the pain come and go and how it materialized. <laughs> and uh, it has gotten better and easier. So updates are no longer painful as they sometimes were. Um, and now we, I think in that sense, it has stabilized a lot more. We're not seeing weird React Native specifically. I, I can't blame the technology. Let's, let's put it that way. It's not our first source of, of problems in the application. The first source of problems, I believe, is weird Chinesium-based Android devices. <laughs> <laughs> you just invented a new word. Well, you know. Okay. Do we have any other questions out here? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you see how easy it is to follow directions? Yeah. We're working on it. <laughs> I have a question. Uh, what's the limit uh, about the meeting? Um, about the uh, video conference or the, the participants? The, yeah. A participant limit. So that's a good question. Uh, it gets asked a lot, and the answer is somewhat vague, uh, which is there is no limit that we impose. Uh, so the limit always comes in the hardware. So how many calls can you do? We have something I haven't mentioned in this presentation, but I have talked about long and through is our um, adaptivity work. So basically, the larger the conference gets, the less videos that will fit on the pipe. So we just start dropping them. We use different technologies to do this. So the first one is simulcast. So the person who is not the active speaker will only send a, a small thumbnail version of its own video and the router will make sure that you don't receive 20 videos in HD. You will receive the active speaker in HD, everybody else in a thumbnail. Then on top of this, we use SVC, so scalable video coding. We can drop the frame rate, so thumbnails don't need 30 FPS. We can drop it all the way to 7.5, I believe. And then if this is even not enough, we can start dropping thumbnails. And then as we drop thumbnails, we will end up getting less video, less video, less video until it fits the pipe. Um, and the WebRTC engine and, and Chrome itself, for example, you can check, it has this idea of CPU overuse. So if the CPU goes nuts because you're sending in you know, 4K video twice or something, uh, what happens is that it starts shrinking the resolution of the local video to make sure it sort of, it doesn't create packet loss because everything else in the system is just crawling to a halt because video processing is taking very long. So. There's a number of things and te techniques we employ to make sure that you have a good meetings experience. Uh, unfortunately, if you're using like a not very powerful Android device or an old iPhone or who knows, or an, an old laptop as well, it will be worse. Uh, but we don't impose a limit. The limit is given by the platform. Anybody else? We're just getting started, so All right. might want to get some water. Game on. So in, in, in the application, you, uh, well, in, in Jitsi in general, everything is done with React Native on the, on the web and on mobile. What are the possibilities to use the SDK without React Native? Rather, right. So, developed, so, so one thing I, I think I should have made a more, mm -hmm. make it more important is that we used React Native for building the app and the SDK, but the SDK is native. So the API that we offer is a full native API. We don't offer an actual React Native API. We use React Native as a tool to create the SDK, which is native. Too many natives in a single sentence, I know. Uh, <laughs> but uh, 8x8's virtual office is uh, is good old native, Android and iOS, Android, Java, plus Kotlin, iOS, some Objective-C, some Swift, and the SDK is completely independent of React Native. It's just an implementation detail. On iOS, you can't even see it because of how iOS creates binaries. All those things are hidden. On Android, you always have access to stuff, so you can sort of see it there, uh, but you don't need to use any React Native-specific stuff to integrate the SDK. Um, 
you just call, I, I've shown the, the Objective-C and the Java sort of code examples um, to try to sort of show that the integrations we have always done are native. So Stride was native, Virtual Office is native, Riot is native. Um, this is the, the target sort of that we, that we are optimizing for. No, because, um, <coughs> so the rendering, because of how React Native gives you the ability to, to use the native tools you have, uh, what we basically do is uh, the React Native WebRTC plugin has a native view that allows you to use from JavaScript, but when you look at the resulting application, it's just another UI view or metal view in iOS cases. Well, on Android, we use a surface view renderer if you're into the details. Uh, so it's OpenGL backed, and uh, you can, you're just able to use it. You don't need to do anything specific to rendering JavaScript or anything like that. All that's taken care of, as I mentioned. Uh, so this doesn't pose any, any drawbacks. Uh, one potential drawback is that if you hog the, the JavaScript thread for a long time, for example, because you're doing some heavy computations in JavaScript, uh, that because JavaScript is used to actually do the layout, you may see your UI become sluggish. So this is something we, we really work towards. So we did a lot of work in React Native WebRTC to move all the heavy lifting to other background threads and whatnot so that the main thread would always be uh, out of work and ready to have a smooth and battery animations and all these things. Any more questions? So, you know we have stickers, right? Yeah. You notice that? We have stickers. I have. Like, but I like as well. I like the symmetry of this one, though. I'm just letting you know. It's an informational like thing. All right. Yeah. I, I also have Jitsi stickers if anybody wants one. Mm -hmm. So find me around. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. Really? <laughs> Saul's so gonna put some Jitsi stickers on the back table, but give him a round of applause.